This video is made possible by 28 Mobile. To get the Galaxy Alpha and the new Note 4 today, check out 28mobile.com. Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at Samsung's Galaxy Alpha. This is their attempt to silence critics who say they don't make premium designed phones. So instead of all plastic construction this time, we have a metal frame with a polished chamfered edge. In many ways, it does resemble the design of the iPhone 5 and 5S with that nice angular design, the more industrial design, as opposed to the more rounded design that the iPhone 6 has introduced. Now this does appear to be taking on the iPhone 6. It's got the same size screen, 4.7 inches, 7 20p resolution while the iPhone 6 is 750p resolution so 312 pixels per inch on the Samsung 326 on the iPhone now in terms of specs we have an Exynos octa-core processor which is a dual quad core so we have a Cortex A15 clocked at 1.8 and a Cortex A7 clocked at 1.3 there is a Snapdragon 801 version of this phone that's sold in Southeast Asia now of course this does have standard Samsung features like a fingerprint sensor and a heart rate monitor but this phone is not IP67 certified like like the Galaxy S5. Now this phone comes standard with 32 gigs of storage with no micro SD expansion slot. We also get two gigs of RAM. All right, so let's get into this. So inside we'll find our black Galaxy Alpha. It's also available in white, pink, or gold. That little tab here to lift up. And of course you have all the major features highlighted on the front and on the back. We're covered in plastic here. So let's go ahead and lift that up. And there we go, we have that texture that's very grippable. It's very soft, kind of a rubbery texture, very different from any Samsung phone I've seen before. And then we have our front plastic here, so let's go ahead and peel that off. There we go. So of course we have a little more plastic around the camera module here, and we should have a little plastic along the side bezels. Now before I gush about the design materials and the compact size of the Galaxy Alpha, let's get through some of the accessories in here, which is gonna be different depending on your market. So again, this is the Korean market. So we have some paperwork, most likely in Korean, as you can see here. Now on the inside, we'll find our standard white micro USB charging cable. We'll also find our wall adapter with another micro USB cable permanently connected. Of course, this is the Korean version. I can't use that here, but of course I have plenty of power adapters. We also have our standard Samsung earphones. These are in-ear style with a remote control and microphone. And of course, we do have replacement ear tips to find the right size for your ears. So once again, like all Korean phones, it comes with a battery charger along with an extra battery. So you get two batteries here. Again, both 1870 milliamp hours and they do integrate the NFC antenna. Now the battery charger is a chamber style charger. So all I have to do is slip in your battery, connect your power and it charges it for you. So it's kind of great. Instead of having to carry an extra charger around, I have to do is carry this thin battery in your pocket and when you need a charge all I have to do is swap out the batteries instead. So to install the battery and SIM we have to remove the back panel. They do give us a little thumbnail port up here to pry it off just like other Samsung phones. So you get metal construction still with a removable back panel so you can swap out the batteries pretty easily. So let's go ahead and slide in the battery here. And the interesting thing here, at least to me, is the fact that this phone is using a nano SIM. I think this is the first Samsung phone I've used that has a nano SIM, so that's kind of nice. So for example, if you have a nano SIM from your iPhone or your Motorola phone or whatever, you won't have to use a micro SIM adapter anymore. So on the inside of the cover, you'll find some shielding and that's about it. The NFC radio is built into the battery. So let's go ahead and snap this back on. Alrighty, let's go ahead and boot this phone up. Just gonna tap and hold the power button along the right side here. Now, if you buy the Korean version, this is the first screen you get, but you can go right here to change the language pretty easily. Now, let's take a look at the design of the Galaxy Alpha, which is the big story here. A really compact 4.7 inch phone with a very narrow bezel here. Of course, the edges are made out of aluminum with a milled chamfered edge. And it's not just a simple aluminum edge. You can see it's got a nice design here. So along the left hand and right hand side, you can see it's kind of recessed here. So that kind of gives you a nice place to put your thumb or your finger to operate the controls along the side. So along the left hand side, you'll find your volume rocker, which is a pretty thin button, but again, very tactile, works very well. And you can see it's recessed in the middle, also made out of metal and milled and polished like the rest of the frame. Now along the right hand side you'll find your similarly thin power on and off button again of same quality as the volume buttons. Now toward the top you'll find the headphone jack and one of the microphones along with these antenna insulators at each corner. Very similar to the design of the iPhone 5 and 5S. They're just in a different position. Now that design is picked up on the bottom with the micro USB charging port along with the microphone right next to that and as you can see here we have a side facing speaker. Again very similar to the iPhone. Most Galaxy phones have placed the speaker on the back so this is a welcome change. Now toward the back you'll find a 12 megapixel instead of the Galaxy S5 16 megapixel camera but it's still good for 4K video recording 
along with digital stabilization. Now next to it, you'll find the heart rate monitor, which is in a vertical instead of horizontal position like the other Galaxy products. You can also see that it's flush to the surface of the casing instead of recessed like those other products. You'll also find an LED flash just above that. Now toward the top of the phone, you'll find your LED notification light, the earpiece, a front-facing 2.1 megapixel camera good for 1080p HD video, and you also find your sensors, your proximity sensor and ambient light sensor. Now at the bottom, we'll find our home button, which does integrate the fingerprint scanner. We also have our backlit capacitive Android keys for recent apps and back, and they do have dual purposes, which I'll explore in this video. All right, so let's take a look at the software on the phone. Now this is running Android 4.4.4 or KitKat, the latest version at the time of filming. So we can swipe to unlock the screen. We get a little different unlock effect than before. So you can see we have our home screen, which again is pretty familiar to Samsung, just with a unique wallpaper for the Alpha series. So we can pinch in and out to see all the available home screens here so we can slide through them we can select which one we want to be the home screen right here we can also add new ones like so we can rearrange them and we can drag them up here to delete them we can also go to home screen settings which allows us to enable or disable the my magazine effect or we can go to the transition effect and select which one we want here now what is my magazine well if you're not familiar with this all you have to do is swipe all the way to the right and you get to my magazine which is fed by flipboard so basically this is a way of aggregating news and information so in one quick glance, you can see all of the top stories in a certain category. So you can tap on it. So you can see the story. You can swipe through it like so. Of course, you can go back here and you can edit this. So you can go to settings and you can edit the content that feeds in here. So for example, if you like science and technology, but not sports, you can click that. And once you go here, it updates for that uh, feed. So for example, I have science and technology here and I can see stories automatically aggregated into this category. You can also add certain social feeds like Twitter, Google Plus, or YouTube. Once you've add those, and logged in, you'll then see your updates right in my magazine. Now, in terms of these Android keys, you have double tap the home button to activate S Voice. What's the weather like tomorrow? The sun will be shining on Friday. Of course, you could just tap and hold the home button to get to Google Now. What's the weather like tomorrow in Rochester Hills? Tomorrow's forecast for Rochester Hills is 75 degrees and partly cloudy. Now we have recent apps here. So you can see we have all our recent apps and we can swipe them out of the way to close them or tap them to activate them. You can also clear them all by tapping this control. And then you can go to active applications here to see how much RAM it's taken up. You can see how much RAM is left here and you can forcibly end them all this way as well. Now the recent apps key also acts as our settings button. So as you can see, it takes me right to our home screen editor. But of course, if you're in an app, it takes us to the settings for that app, such as the browser right here. Now we also have multi-window mode on this phone. Just tap and hold the back button. It brings up the multi-window tray. So all of these are apps that can be open side by side, such as Chrome and YouTube. So you can watch some YouTube video while browsing the web. You can resize the windows. You can also tap on that little icon here so you can close one of the windows. You can flip them around or you can copy text from one window and paste it in the other. Now you can also drag and drop one app on top of another that will close that app. You do not have recent apps in each window like you have with some Galaxy tablets. Now you can also modify this panel by going up to edit and you can drag and drop apps from the available apps here or you can remove them if you don't want them in this tray but there are no limits on how many you can add. Now if you like to open certain apps side by side frequently you can go ahead and create a recipe here. So for example you now have Gmail and Chrome side by side so in order to launch both apps all I have to do is tap that instead of opening them one at a time. Now we also have our drop down notification panel with all those familiar Samsung quick settings at the top. You can see we also have S Finder and Quick Connect as well as all of our notifications which are expandable. You can clear them all. You can also automatically set your brightness or manually control it. Now S Finder is particularly useful. This allows you to search the entire device for any content. So for example, if you search Android here, so you can see my files, you can see events in the calendar, you can go to settings, you can go to the web. So for example, if you want to jump to the fingerprint scanner to set it up, I have to do is start typing in finger. And then as you can see here, I see finger scanner, just tap on it, it takes me right to that settings panel. Generally what I prefer to do is train my thumb here in a sideways gesture because that is normally how I'm holding the phone. So to unlock my device, I just swipe my thumb. Now we also have Quick Connect, which allows us to see nearby wireless devices such as printers, uh, Samsung Smart TVs for broadcasting our display wirelessly, other Samsung devices for file transfers, and that sort of thing.
Now as for the quick settings, you can see we have a row up here, but it's limited. To see all of them, you just press up here, or you can use a two finger gesture to see all of them. You can also modify this, so you can see what appears in the row up here, and you can see what appears when you bring down the two finger gesture. Now you can modify these just by rearranging them. You can drag and drop them into different locations here. Now you can also reset this back to default if you prefer. So the quick settings are pretty basic. So you have quick things like volume, so you can mute, vibrate, Bluetooth, rotation lock, Wi-Fi, and GPS location. If you tap and hold on any one of these buttons, they take you right to the control panel. Now you can also toggle off NFC and you can enable something called card mode, which is unique to the Korean market. You can also turn off mobile network data. You also have ultra power saving mode, a feature we're familiar with from other Samsung devices. So if you activate this right now, the battery is at 52% with ultra power saving mode active. You can see we have about 4.5 days of standby time. So ultra power saving mode shuts down background apps, optimizes performance for battery life. So you can see we have a very simple interface, grayscale screen, and you can add a certain number of apps, very few of them, calculator, clock, Google Plus, memo app, and the voice recorder. So very limited capabilities here, but you have a phone that will last a lot longer. Now we can also disable multi-window mode. So if you don't want to accidentally trigger that, you can turn it off. We also have that toolbox feature here, which is a little widget that floats in the background here. So as you can see here, it goes into a translucent state when it's not active. You can tap on it and it brings up commonly used apps. Now you can modify this just by tapping and holding on it and going up to edit. So you can see it only gives you two apps right now, but you can add up to five apps. So I can add Chrome. Let's go ahead and add email. And let's go ahead and add the gallery app and Gmail app. So as you see, I've maxed out. So I have to remove one app to add another. So there we go. We can quickly access Chrome from anywhere we are. And it just floats in the background when we need it. Now we also have screen mirroring. So if we have a compatible device like a Samsung Smart TV, we can wirelessly broadcast the display and audio of this phone directly on our TV. We also have two familiar Samsung features, Smart Stay and Smart Pause. Smart Stay prevents the screen from going to sleep if the camera can see the presence of your eyes. Smart Pause pauses playback again if your eyes are averted and resumes it when your eyes reconnect. We also have blocking mode here, which is basically a do not disturb feature with a lot of controls here. You can also select certain times of day for this feature to automatically activate. Now we can also increase touch sensitivity. So basically we can use this phone with gloved hands. Now if we go to our app drawer, you can see the standard array of Google apps, some Samsung apps, and some third party apps like Flipboard and Dropbox, as well as some of the apps from the telco. So if I wanna hide some of these apps or disable them, I have several options here. So for example, I can see uninstall or disable apps. So only certain apps are eligible for this, for uninstallation or disabling. So for example, I have this telco app here, which I don't want. I can disable it, I can't uninstall it it disappears. So as you can see here, some of them I can't do anything with. So what I'll have to do instead is hide them. So if I go up here, I can go to hide apps and select the apps I wanna hide here. So let me find them again, like so. Click done and they disappear from view. Now of course I can also create folders within the app drawer here. So for example, I can go ahead and start adding uh, items. So I can start adding just Google apps here. So I have an app folder here, which is on its own separate page just for folder items. So I can name it, I can change the color and that sort of thing. So I can drag and drop this to the home screen. As you can see here, I can drag and drop it to one of the home screens in this little previewer down at the bottom, drag and drop it and you're good. And of course, if you wanna remove it, just take it up to remove. Now, if you take a look at the settings panel, again, pretty familiar with most of the same features from other Samsung devices. As you can see here, you have this icon view, but you can also go to a list view, which I find a little more useful. We also have easy mode, which simplifies the user interface for certain users. I call this grandma mode. So if you select it, it's basically a different launcher. It simplifies the home screen, puts the major apps on the home screen, along with quick access to a magnifier and an LED flashlight, as well as adding your context right to the home screen. Now under the settings panel, under motion, we have air view, which is a feature that's toggled off by default. But basically this allows you to hover your finger over the display to bring up some information without actually touching the display. So for example, when you're looking at your photo gallery, the gallery expands out for you. Or if you're looking at a thumbnail, that expands out for you. It only works with certain Samsung apps. Now under motions and gestures, again, you'll find standard Samsung stuff such as direct call. So if you're looking at a contact, when you raise the phone to your ear, it automatically calls them. Smart alert, if you pick up your phone and you have a notification pending, it vibrates for you. Mute pause, basically put your hand over the device or flip the device over and it'll pause or mute your, your alarms or playback. You also have palm swipe for screen capture. So you can swipe your palm across the screen, does a little screen grab for you. 
Now, if you look at our storage, you can see just how much space is left over. So you can see how much the system is taking up about 6.18 gigs. And then you can see some of the space I've already used, which is filled up with some 4K video recordings and some photographs as well as a few apps downloaded. But you can see just how much space you have left after 32 gigs. Now, again, the display is 4.7 inches Super AMOLED with a pixel density of 312. Now, this seems to be one of Samsung's sub-pixel displays. So it's not as sharp as I'd like to see at 312 pixels per inch. It should seem a little clearer. But again, Super AMOLED gives you very bright, vivid colors with deep contrast, so it's great for watching movies. It's also pretty good outdoors as well, so visibility is particularly good with this phone. Now, it's not quite as bright as other Samsung devices or the iPhone 6 in particular, which is very bright, very bright and clear display. This is a little dimmer, but of course you have deeper contrast, so it makes things pop out a little more. So the camera app is pretty full featured here, pretty much standard stuff for any Samsung device these days. So you can take your photograph right here, you have tap to focus, and it's really quick out of focus here, it's really responsive. So you can also tap and hold the shutter release to take a burst shot, like so. You can pinch in and out to zoom in on your subject. You can also record video. Right now I'm recording in 1080p with stabilization turned on, which does crop the image. You can pause it, resume it, and you can also snap a photograph while recording in 1080p or below, but 4K, you do not have that capability. You also have continuous autofocus in video as well. You also have all your modes here. So we have beauty face, shot more, panorama, virtual tour, dual camera. You can also manage your modes so you can remove some of these modes or download more modes from the Samsung App Store. So under settings, you can see we have our resolution options here. So for video, I can select UHD, which will turn off some features such as video stabilization and photographs within the video. You can also change your photograph size from 12 megapixels all the way down to 2.4 megapixels. You can also flip the camera towards me. And again, this is 1080p HD video, which is pretty decent. You can't pinch in and out and that sort of thing. You can take your photograph. You can also select your various modes here, such as dual camera mode. So you can record both the front facing and rear facing camera at the same time as you get this little thumbnail here and you can select different borders for that thumbnail. Now in terms of camera quality, it's really excellent like other Samsung cameras. Although it's not 16 megapixels like the GS5, it delivers very similar results. 4K video is also excellent. Again, video is well balanced and adjusted for the scene. So it automatically adjusts for focus and exposure really smoothly. And then it's just really clear and crisp. The only drawback here is the lack of stabilization means 4K video doesn't look as crisp as it could. So if you're hand holding this, you're not gonna get great results with 4K, but certainly on a tripod, you'll do very well. In terms of low light performance, the camera is also pretty decent. It's able to find focus pretty quickly, although it is slower than in normal daylight conditions. Now compared to the iPhone 6, the iPhone 6 still does a better job with low light performance, especially when it comes to the LED flash. The Alpha does discolor the scene pretty significantly with the LED flash, while the iPhone 6 finds the right balance. All right, guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, testing out that front-facing camera. Again, 2.1 megapixels, capable of 1080p HD video recording. Does a pretty decent job, also has pretty decent audio pickup. Now in terms of benchmark scores on Geekbench 3, you can see that we're doing pretty well with multi-core score here. Over 3,000 beating the new iPhone 6, but of course the single core score is a different story here. The iPhone 6 certainly beats it out pretty clearly. Now in terms of audio quality, it's nice to have a speaker facing toward the side instead of the back. So when you're holding the phone, you're not muting the speaker, or when you lay it flat on the table, you're not muting the speaker. Now compared to the iPhone 6, the Alpha is a little clearer, a little sharper, but not as bass heavy. The iPhone sounds a little more richer, a little fuller, but they're about the same in terms the volume so I'll play samples so you can get an idea of how they sound different. Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at one of my favorite cases for the iPhone 6. That is the Spec Candy Shell. Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at one of my favorite cases for the iPhone 6. That is the Spec Candy Shell. So there's a lot to like about the Galaxy Alpha with that small, compact form factor, with that industrial design that picks up on some nice materials that Samsung hasn't used before. That aluminum construction, polished chamfered edge, that soft touch material on the back. Overall, the phone feels perfect in the hand with those nice materials the combination of the metal and the soft grip plastic. It's also the perfect size. 4.7 inches is the perfect size and it's more compact than the iPhone 6. So the iPhone 6 is also 4.7 inch screen, but you can see the footprint is quite a bit bigger. But the iPhone is still a bit slimmer, just a hair, so it does make some difference. But generally speaking, you have a more compact design that I feel is a little more comfortable to handle than the iPhone 6. We also have those great cameras with quick autofocus and excellent 4K video recording capabilities along with digital stabilization, which does a good 
job at 1080p or lower. Now this is one of the first Samsung phones in which I don't have to complain about touch with lag. It's a very smooth operating phone and I think that's partly thanks to the fact that we have a 720p display instead of a 1080p or QHD display so there's less pixels to drive and better performance comes as a result. Battery performance is pretty average here. I'm able to get at least a full day out of the device. So for example after 10 hours of use I have about 50% of the battery life left. That gets me through a day of heavy use. So if you want the premium design of the new Note 4 but a smaller cheaper package this is definitely the phone to take a look at. So that's going to do for me in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.